so I think it's recording now. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, okay, um, I'm trying to convince you how to write good PR. Um, and I think review uh, writing good PR is mainly about re uh, convincing the reviewer. Um, so that's the subtitle. Um, it's not a long presentation. Um, I made some notes that I think are good to have. Um, so there's actually just three things I want to talk about. Uh, basically, I'm going to give a list of things I look for. Um, I'm going to go over PR that actually did things well. And I think it's a good example and some lessons we can draw from that. And um, I hope we can have some discussion after that. Um, so a very short list. Uh, whenever I receive a PR, I always go over what is changing. Um, um, because anything is a change and that's be a worthy change. Um, so why is it changing? Um, and that's um, always the important question um, because if you know why, you can also think about alternatives. Um, you might be using one algorithm or uh, another. Um, those are some interesting things to think about. Um, and it helps a reviewer to share your thoughts about that, but that's going to be a later part. Um, another thing I always look for is regressions. Um, if I apply this change, does it change something? Um, and some changes are good, but if it breaks a fun another function, um, that's bad. So that's something I always look for and um, that always goes through my mind as a reviewer. Um, and the last thing, single change, single commit. Do not combine style changes with actual code changes because as a reviewer, I now have to look at every single line. Is it style change or is it actually an intended change? Um, separating those out makes things a lot easier for the reviewer. So um, that's something I will often hammer on. Um, and maybe I won't even look at your PR if it's not sort of split out. So um, I will prefer PR that actually are very cleanly written and make my life easier. Um, so these, those are some things I always come to whenever I look at PR. Um, but let's make it a bit more concrete. So I picked an example, and uh, this is actually PR totally outside of the format repository. It's a puppet project, um, but uh, the puppet code is very minimal. Don't really think about that. Um, I was actually tagged into this, this um, as a reviewer. Um, now, I must say that the last time I have done a uh, Red MQ server is, I think, about six years ago. And even then, it wasn't that long. So I'm done, I don't know a lot about Rabbit MQ, but I was tagged in a reviewer. So um, yeah, I took a look. Um, so the title is Remove Invalid Cluster Node Type Disk. OK, so there's a long, uh, this, this is actually the, the PR description. Um, and I will go through this. Um, I hope everyone can read it. Um, but in the first part, we can actually see um, the author likes to propose a change, um, and he goes through the options. So um, what he did well in the, and I don't know if you can actually see my mouse as well, but you can see C commit, 6C, something, something. Um, so I also added that. So they linked the original commit that added um, the option disk. Um, OK, so that's very useful context. Now, as a reviewer, I don't have to go through the history and read up all this information. Um, and you, as a um, contributor, most likely already did, hopefully already did this. So if you share that information with the reviewer, you are saving time on the reviewer and things go quicker. So um, this is something I very often do. If you have a change, I don't know the code, I will go through the history, the Git log, see why it was introduced. Um, so those are some things. If you share the information with me, you save time on my side. So let's get back to the main story. Um, so then another thing, um, then comes research. Um, the author links a lot of uh, man manual pages that describe the different options, um, why things are there and not there. Um, and those are not too complicated. But um, this made my life easier, because this uh, meant I didn't have to go to the documentation and read up. The links were simply there. I could click them. I have the relevant information um, again. When I review it, it makes my life a lot easier. Um, so this was very, very good to read. Um, now I'm going to show you actual patch, which is just a single line where it removes one option. Um, but because the author showed all the implications of it um, and the history, I could actually say, well, this is a good patch. Um, and if it is was actually a just a single line um, remove disk as an option without any context, 
I probably wouldn't look at it um, uh, because I don't really use WebMQ that much, but because I was tagged in, there's a lot of context, it's easy for me to review. Um, and so those are some general lessons um, that make life easier on the reviewer. Um, so this brings us to the lessons. Um, state the problem. There might, very often in our uh, in the forum you have a uh, red mine um, that describes a bug, but that's usually not the root cause of the problem. The, um, the bug problem bug might describe the situation as an end user, but the root cause might be different or more generic. Um, so you as a uh, author of the PR, you figured out why it was a problem, and you you should describe that. Um, share your thought process. Um, you made choices. You found things out. If you share that with the reviewer, they can go along in what you think is a good change, and they can check your thought process. Um, there's other PRs. I don't have a link to it right now, um, but where the um, where uh, Lucas, for example, said, well. I, on this and this situation in my break, and I could tell him, well, this situation is no longer relevant, so it's not a problem, and that's a good thing. Uh, sharing your thought process makes collaboration easier. Um, so those are share your considerations. Share um, problems you found, uh, choices you made. You might say, well, I tried this uh, search algorithm, but it didn't work well, so I tried the other one, um, and then the reviewer might say, okay, that's good consideration, nothing to, uh, to add about, um, or they might say, well, you might have forgotten this and this in your original test, and that's why the original algorithm might be actually better. Um, and that's um, the summary share. Um, and it's a dialogue. It, you, together, you are working to get your PR merged. Um, you are not just throwing code at the reviewer and hoping it sticks. Um, the reviewer has to go through the same process you did to make sure it's a good change um, and it can be maintained long term. Uh, remember, may, most reviewers are long-time uh, contributors and long-time maintainers. Um, they have to maintain the code uh, for a long time. So any change that you submit has to be good for them and allow them to maintain it for a long time. Um, sharing your thought process is good. Also, you probably don't remember what you did a year ago, but if you have the whole discussion and dialogue um, in the PR, you can go back, see the considerations, and those are things that future you will thank you about. Um, and those are just some quick notes I had. Um, I, it's not a long presentation, um, but I think these are some considerations. Um, so first of all, um, are there any questions? There is one so far um, in the Q&A section. So add single change, single comment. Um, I believe it's a good thing to fix and improve the code as you go. How do you look at two commits on a single PR? One for the actual change, second for code improvements that are not entirely related to the change. Ideally, squash that merge for easier cherry picking. I think that's an excellent practice. Um, yeah, I, I, as a reviewer, it makes uh, my life a lot easier. I, um, recently, I've also done a few reviewer views where you had that, and I could just go from one commit, review that, go to the next commit, review it, and then the next commit. And that is a good process. Um, it also shows you some uh, evolution. You have to sometimes prepare the code for changes, um, just move a fun function around, easy to review, check off, and then do the actual change, and that makes it easier to review. Um, in the past, I've also worked with uh, Garrett as a uh, review system, which is much more patch-based, and that actually, I like that a lot. Um, I actually liked it a lot more than the GitHub reviews, which is branch-based. Um, but today we are using GitHub, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. But uh, yeah, a patch-based approach, I, I like it a lot. Um, definitely uh, encourage it. And Evert, this this presentation was um, you know incredibly positive, but I'm just wondering within within the Foreman community, are there any particular trends or, or you know uh, things that things that you see that you would like to to stop? I know that you are a serial reviewer of PRs, and it's it's rare that you don't see 
the the changes that are going in and the the, the discussions that are going on is there anything that we we could do better in general in a specific sense yeah um i think there's a few um i didn't want to take any sort of negative examples because usually it's sort of track you can track it down to a person and i don't like to sort of zero in on, on the person but definitely some things that I find hard, um, and I think it's uh, the state of problem. Um, one thing I often see is that it's just a single line um, and doesn't describe anything. Um, so I, I don't know what you even want to achieve. You Usually, uh, the summary of the, uh, of the commit is just um, change function x. And yeah, I can see that in patch, but I don't know why you're changing it. Um, so the only comment I can give you is, well, you're breaking this and this other thing, but I don't, I cannot help you to actually solve your problem. So if you sh state the problem, I can look at your PR and see, well, you're trying to do this and this, but it doesn't work for some reason. But if you do this, it actually works. But if you never share a problem, I cannot help you. And that's why I think a lot of PRs get stuck in this back and forth where nobody knows where you want to end up. So. Um, that is one thing that I would really hammer on. Um, yeah. Um, that That's my main, main uh, annoyance. Too short or, or missing descriptions at all. And there's just another question there. Um, how do we make the review experience consistent across repos and even reviewers in the core repo? Now, that's a hard question. Um, I think the problem is now a people problem. And people problems are always harder than something which you can solve with technology. Um, so yeah, it, it is about the person who we reviewed it. Um, at least I always try to see the implications in what does a PR do, um, what does it do, what what does it impact? If I change it here, does it impact other repositories? Um, but I can I can do that because I've been in a project for years and I have a pretty decent overview of the different projects and how they interact. That is not something that everyone has, as especially not on uh, on their first day. Um, that I don't know how to solve that well. Um, a lot of projects solve it with CI. Have have aggression tests. Um, that run it against different versions, different combinations. Um, so that's how you solve it with technology. But still you have the um, style and those kind of things. Um, and I think the main thing to remember about a review is um, making sure that you are not the only person who understands some piece of code. If you share it within the review process, you can go back and forth. And in the end, you should have at least two, per two persons who understand the problem and the solution. And hopefully more if you have more reviewers. And that's why I mentioned um, I'm losing. Um, it's dialogue. Together you can share information. It's not about, a review is not a, a much, as much about the code, but more about the process and getting um, the work done together. Uh, for example, even if you're two junior developers briefing each other, you can learn. Um, a common question that you can always ask is why. If you don't understand a piece of code, ask why. Either the author can explain you why they make a choice and you've learned something, as a, even as a reviewer, um, or they don't know and to, maybe there's a better way. Um, a concrete example, at a previous job, I had a colleague um, who wasn't as experienced in Python, and he asked me, why do you do it this way and not the other way? And the explanation from my side was, well, I rebased it a few times and I didn't really see sort of the end-to-end -end solution. You were right. If you look at it from a fresh perspective, it's good. So even though he didn't know a lot about Python, he was surprised about my implementation and he was right about that. And I could then have a simple implementation. So understanding change is, I think, the process. And um, together you can get um, to the end solution where you actually understand both. I think that's the main takeaway I have. Just another question for you, Eva. What's your view on reviewing code without executing the code? Um, if I say it's fine, 
um, and mostly because I usually do that. I, I rarely run code, to be honest. Um, I do mostly sort of a mental execution how it would run. I, I basically never check out uh, PR and actually run it. So from my perspective, it's fine. Um, I know others disagree, but um, yeah, my perspective, fine. And I suppose I have another question, something that's come up in the pulp community recently is they have implemented a, they've implemented a process change where every substantial PR requires a demo. Uh, they don't have, just say, the formal community demos every three weeks that, that we do, but do you think that a demo per p sizable PR with a with a significant change would help with the transparency and the dialogue and perhaps with forensics at a later time. That's hard to say um, because I must, I should also admit that I've never participated in a formal demo and I've never demonstrated anything. Um, so that's another. Uh, um, Personally, I like reading the Git log and um, the changes in that way um, because it it's quite easy to keep up to date. Videos are usually a lot longer and harder to sort of parse information. I can scan an email quite quickly. I can't really scan uh, a video. So that's my personal opinion and why I think that a demo is not a replacement for the other thing. It, it's more of a one or the other. Um, it's not really one or the other, it's more maybe both formats will work well. I would also suggest don't do big, huge changes in one PL. Um, to answer, should big changes be done more before managing them? Um, and also to answer how to get stuff in faster, break it down into smaller chunks that are easier to review and easier to get in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I will also say that splitting things up, that's a skill that you develop over time. It's not easy to see what the individual parts are when you are just beginning. Um, it's something you learn over time. It takes practice, but it's a very useful skill to have. Um, and um, if you want feedback on anything, if it's too big, um, maybe we can give the that feedback, um, see how you can split it up. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, splitting up is a good thing. The subject of your next presentation for us about. Oh, that's going to be a difficult one. Cool. Um, are there any more questions? Any more comments? Um, there was a little bit more discussion about uh, review without actually checking out the code uh, in chat. I, uh, quickly summary. Yeah, the, there's definitely risk that when you don't check it out and don't run it. Um, you purely rely on the tests. That's why I actually quite often acknowledge a PR, but then ask someone else to merge it. Um, but you might have seen me do that a few times. Um, also, if there are tests for the code, then I feel usually a bit lot more secure about merging it and seeing how it lands. Um, and again, it gives me a lot more confidence when I understand the problem. And I, when I think, well, I probably would have written the same code, then I would be fine with it. So that's again, why an explanation helps with it. That is great. Um, unless there is anything else, I think we might wrap it up there. Um, this is the end of our community event today. Just I saw earlier that Tomer had an idea of maybe gathering at uh, 6 UTC for a beverage of any kind is acceptable. So if anyone is interested in that, we will do it via the breakout link, which I will just reshare. Just give me a sec. I think you can stop the recording then. Yeah, I'm going to stop the recording. So the one thing I'll say is that if there's any feedback um, on Evelt's talk, feel free to reach out to us on Forum and Discourse.
Um, and yeah, thank you for, thank you, Evert, and thank you all for your participation.